It's good to read. See, this is good to read. I'm really happy to announce that I'm going to be giving away my Wireshark packet analysis and ethical hacking course. From today, I'm gonna to be uploading videos on YouTube for free. So if you can't afford to buy my course, this is your opportunity to get my course for free. I'm gonna show you practically how to capture packets off of the network, how to capture passwords, how to capture voice calls and replay them, and a whole bunch of other things. This is a very practical Wireshark analysis course. Rather than just showing you the menus within Wireshark or all the options within Wireshark, which can be very boring and very tedious, I'm gonna show you practically how to capture packets off the wire and then do things. So to make it more fun, we're going to do some ethical hacking. Rather than just learning Wireshark by going through menus, we're going to have a bit of fun by capturing packets off the wire. Now, you don't have to build the same networks as I'm building. What I'm gonna do is give you the PCAP file so that you can download them and follow along if you want to. So use the links below the videos in this course, download the PCAP files, open them up in Wireshark, and then you'll see exactly what I'm seeing when I'm doing the captures. Now I'm gonna be uploading at least one Wireshark video per week to YouTube. If you can't wait, so you want the course right away, use the links below this video to buy the course. You can either get the course from various platforms such as davidbomble.com, or if you wanna support both me and Network Chuck, then use the link below to join This Is IT. If you join This Is IT, you support us to create more free content. So it'd be great if you can do that. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started and I'm gonna show you how to practically capture packets, interrogate them, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replay voice calls just to show you what's possible. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the things that you can do with Wireshark don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing in this video. It's just to try and inspire you and get you started with what's possible and what you'll be able to do by the end of this course. By the end of this course, you'll be able to capture voice packets and replay voice conversations. You'll be able to capture routing updates. So routing updates from protocols such as OSPF, EIGRP and others, and then see what's going on in the network. You'll be able to troubleshoot network issues by using Wireshark. I've made this course as practical as I can. Make sure that you download the attached Wireshark PCAP files so that you can do things yourself and try things yourself. But without further ado, let me show you some of the options available in Wireshark and hopefully inspire you so that you can see what you can accomplish by learning how to use Wireshark. Let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at this practically. Here's an example, I'm using GNS3 to run a virtual infrastructure. I've got two PCs, PC1 and PC2. These are Windows computers. So here's PC2, here's PC1. They are Windows 10 computers and I'm running IP phones on these computers. So what I'm gonna do is capture traffic on this link. So right click, start capture. GNS3 makes it really easy to capture packets using Wireshark because GNS3 has Wireshark integrated with it. So I can specify that I wanna capture ethernet traffic on this link and click OK. Wireshark starts automatically. And as you can see here, I'm seeing a bunch of protocols like STP, DTP, so that's spanning tree. This is dynamic trunking protocol. This is EIGRP, which is a routing protocol. But what I could do is filter for skinny. Skinny Client Control Protocol, or SCCP, is the communication protocol once again used between the phones and the router. So notice Skinny Client Control Protocol. You can see it's a TCP protocol. This is a message from the router to a phone. So the source port is 2000 going to a random port number. Here's an example from the phone to the router. So notice source port is this, destination port is 2000. Okay, but that's probably not what you're interested in seeing. You're probably interested in seeing UDP traffic. Now here we see some other traffic, some Dropbox traffic, that's not really 
what I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing telephony traffic. Now, when I go to telephony VoIP calls in Wireshark, at the moment, I don't see any voice calls. But when I make a call from one phone to the other, so let's make a call from 1001. Just make that a bit quieter to 1000. Call is set up. On this side, I can answer the call. And again, I'm going to get the feedback. Hello. This is David Bumble speaking. A lot of echo. Bit strange that I'm talking to myself. But there you go. Phone call from one virtual phone to another. Now, what I'll do is mute the lines so we don't get all that feedback, but there's a call set up between the two phones. In Wireshark, telephony VoIP calls allows me to see that this is an active call. What I'll do now is end the call. So notice the call is ended, and back in Wireshark, telephony VoIP calls, notice the call is completed. It's a skinny call from 1001 to 1000. So Wireshark is picking up that there was a call taking place on the network. Scrolling down, I see this UDP traffic. I see media independent network transport. It's got it listed as Mint, but this is actually incorrect. This is an incorrect classification. I know this is a call from this IP address to this IP address because VoIP calls tells me that. I can see the IP address involved in the call. So I've got these two phones talking to each other. So what I'm gonna do, and this is the trick, right click, decode as, and don't use mint in this example, we're gonna use RTP. So scrolling right down, RTP, real time protocol. I wanna decode this traffic as RTP traffic. And notice the difference. I can see that this is G711 ULAW. G711 is a codec used for encoding analog voice. When I'm speaking, this is an analog waveform. So I'm sending voice into the air, and that's an analog waveform in the air. So in this example, the IP phone, not the iPhone, but the IP phone is taking my analog voice, which is sent through the air, and encoding it as zeros and ones. And that uses what's called a codec. We have a coder, a decoder, codec. The codec used here is G711. We have G711 U law, notice the U or A law. U law is what's used in the USA. A law, I like to remember, is all of us. So that's not entirely true. It's people like me in the UK, we would generally use A law when making calls on a traditional telephony network like through British Telecom. But this is IP. These are Cisco IP phones, so they use ULAW by default. So G711, ULAW. There are different codecs such as G729, G722. There are other codecs, but in this example, this is the codec that we're using. Now, you may not be interested in all of that detail, but notice here we've got real-time transport protocol. We can see the payload. Once again, notice G711. But probably what you wanna do is the following. Go to telephony, go to RTP, RTP streams. And notice here we can see the source and destination streams. Now in voice over IP, on Cisco phones as an example, there are two unidirectional streams for a two-way conversation. So if I'm talking to you and you talking to me, there's a unidirectional stream from me to you and then a different one from you to me. Two different streams and that's why we see it as two streams here. When troubleshooting voice over IP as an example, you often need to troubleshoot one-way voice. And the reason it's one-way voice is because there are two unidirectional streams. If there's a firewall, as an example, blocking your voice getting to me, you'll be able to hear me, but I won't be able to hear you. Again, unidirectional. So I'm gonna select those two streams and I'm gonna click Analyze. So here's the output of that. 
We can see as an example forward and reverse calls and we get information such as the maximum jitter, which is the variable delay in a voice call. If your jitter's too high, the voice quality degrades dramatically. A whole bunch of information, but what I wanna do here is click play streams. And now what I'll be able to do is play the audio stream. And again, I'm gonna get the feedback. Hello, this is David Bombal speaking. A lot of echo. Bit strange that I'm talking to myself. So notice there are two streams here. We've got two separate streams. The blue one is from phone two to phone one. The gray one is from phone one to phone two. Hence getting a lot of replay. What I could do is just select one of the streams and click analyze. So what I've got here is one stream only rather than two. And again, I'm gonna get the feedback. Hello, this is David Bumble speaking. So notice I am able to grab the audio stream off the wire and then replay it. I can replay both streams. It's a bit weird here because I'm talking to myself. Okay, so that was a quick overview of some of the things that you can do with Wireshark. I'm now gonna show you how to install Wireshark, how to get started, and how you can capture traffic off the network and troubleshoot, as well as learn about what's happening on networks. People disappear.